I mean, what are we going to get next? Like Disney, the safari movie? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> what are we going to get? It's a small world after all. Yeah. Oh. The movie. God. The Matterhorn. <laughs> Space <laughs> Mountain movie. The Matterhorn cinematic universe. <laughs> Fuck. Disney's Churro, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Disneyland Churro, the movie. Lights, camera, action. UPS, you piece of shit. <laughs> I was like, you know what I want to do one day? I want to join a gang. We're in 2022. Upgrade the cameras. Yeah. We can see Saturn and shit. But like, I can't get a clear picture of someone robbing the gas station. That was the greatest night in the history of television. Today, I was interested in getting your thoughts on a thought that I had. Yeah. About our current entertainment situation. Uh-huh. Because it feels very recycled. Mm-hmm. And I, I would be so bold to say that a um, majority of people would agree with me, if not everybody. Yes. And I'm not talking just movies. I'm talking even music. Mm-hmm. So this happened yesterday. I had this thought because I was just scanning through the radio and I'm hearing samples of songs that now are, are really not even that old. Like before you would sample a song that was 50, 40, 30 years old. Yeah. And now we're sampling <clears throat> Fergie's Glamorous. <laughs> Is that the Jack Harlow? It might be. Yeah. We're sampling Mariah Carey's Fantasy. What? <clears throat> yeah, Big um, big Energy. Ah. By Lato, Lotto, L-A-T-T-O. I don't even know who that is. Me either. You probably heard it. Let's see. Yeah. And she's sampling that one. And she's sampling that. And that's not even that old. That's not even that old. That song... Is that, that reminds me of like a a Rush Hour, I think. Oh, yeah. Don't they have Mm -hmm. that in Rush Hour? Yep. They're playing it in Free Guy. Yeah. They have that in Free Guy, too. The song, yeah. That's fun. So, anyway, I'm just hearing this and I'm like, damn, are we really out of original tunes that like all we're doing is sampling songs that aren't even that old? Right. And it's like happening happening at a more rapid pace. I mean, Drake's made his whole career out of just sampling everything lyrics right music you know who i think started that trend too and i think it's incredibly lazy uh was dj khaled (laughs) i feel like dj khaled was the first person i felt like in the last decade who would just take songs that were not that old yeah take songs from like the decade prior and sample them and And just be, you know, I don't even know, like, but it seems, it does seem very lazy. I really love, and here's the thing about this is it's true. It's the stuff that they prop up, like, but I I really respect and love the people who are still doing original, like, production and composition, Mm -hmm. and they're out there, Um, but they don't get, they don't get the love. And I'm so glad that you said what you said. Yeah. Because that song that I just played is actually DJ Khaled. (laughs) Is it? It's supposedly his beat. I would love to do a whole episode on DJ Khaled. We could just break down DJ Khaled. He's an enigma. Yeah. He is a a otherworldly being. But yeah, this is his song. Or he's on it. It's his production. I'm sure he produced it. That's his trend. Yeah. And at the end, he says the dumbest shit I've ever heard on Uh a song. Okay, so this is the DJ Khaled remix. Excuse me. Oh, Okay, so there's DJ. Listen to the end. This is great. Wait for it. I'm looking at my wrist and it's a new watch. That's how he decided to end that song. Unnecessary. It's a new world and I'm looking at my wrist and it's a new watch. Wow. Compelling. Just poetic. Yeah. I mean, you know, Edgar Allan Poe mm-hmm. would be so proud. Yeah. Shakespeare is not turning in his grave, but rather being resurrected through the brilliant words of DJ Khaled. Yeah. He's like revitalized. Yeah. He wrote like, a new play. Back. Yeah. Oh. 
And not, I don't want to go, come right out and say that there's anything wrong with sampling <clears throat> at all. No. There's some great, great songs that have come from sampling. Of I mean, course. Dr. Dre has sampled. Everybody said Kanye samples all the time. Mac Miller was Mac a great Miller. sampler. Yeah. Um, but I do think there is an art to it, too. Of course. There's an art behind sampling in the right way. I mean, even uh, Kendrick Lamar's, a lot of them. But there's a song by Beach House. Uh-huh. That the, when he sampled it, it's just played in reverse. Mm-hmm. And and let me find the song because it's yeah. going to drive me nuts. Well, I don't know. There's this guy on TikTok right now who's really, really interesting. And he keeps popping up on my shit. Um, and he he shows you where the samples come from. I, I watched that guy. Have you seen him? Yeah. Yeah. I so love his stuff. They're really, really good. They're, and it shows you how there's an art to sampling. Rather than just taking the song and not doing anything <laughs> like you just take that's what dj cal like, yeah that's what that is that's just the beat from that song and the best part of that song is that part right. so i might as well just go listen to the original nice. song yeah you know like he really didn't do anything special with it no. you just took that and then you like laid a new song over it that's it and that like that's not art i feel like if you're gonna sample do something different with it so i think this is the one let me see yeah let me Oh, yeah. Money Trees. So that part that you're hearing in the background, that that's a Beach House song. I love that. And it's just in reverse. Right. But then you hear that come on and it's so iconic. Yes. Like you instantly know. And so that to me is very different than just taking Mariah Carey's fantasy and There's talking even about a, your new watch. An interesting one for Schoolboy Q that I ended up finding that I really, really liked. Um, and I found the original song and I loved it. Um, so that's the original song. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. You know that one? I do. So the original song is like crazy. It's like so good. And it's like a song that you could just, yeah. It's like a song you could just have a nice vibe to, you mm-hmm. know. Oh, right. Oh, this this feels very eighties, right? I like that. It's a lot. not though. It's like a newer song. Yeah. So, I guess that's a good starting point. So there's like, there are still those like top dog entertainment Mm -hmm. who Kendrick and schoolboy works with. Yeah. There's Tyler, the creator who verbally shits on DJ Khaled on purpose. (laughs) And when Tyler, the creator sells more albums than him, he like laughs at him on Twitter and he like calls him out because I I know Tyler being like an original producer fucking hates DJ Khaled. Yeah. And everything he stands for. Well, and again, this is something that I would want to get into on the DJ Khaled episode. Right. But I, I have a very hard time believing DJ Khaled actually makes music. Uh, yeah. And we can get into that on a different episode. So definitely stay tuned. We will. For that. Yeah. Um, but you're right. You're right. And I think it's great because DJ Khaled's whole persona is about we the best. Another (laughs) one. We just, the album's going platinum and all he does is talk about how they're number one everywhere all the time. Right. And I have a hard time believing that all of his albums are the best. Yeah. In terms um, of numbers. Yeah. yeah. You know what? We'll get into it on the DJ Khaled episode because this will turn into a DJ Khaled bashing episode. Yes. And I could go for years. Years. So we will, we will personally, (laughs) we will get a personal DJ Khaled. You know what? I'll even do some research for that one. Hell yeah. Please do look into it. I'm cause I'm very curious about where this guy comes from. And I want to investigate him. mm -hmm. You know, we've got theories, we've got conspiracies, we've got (laughs) just so many questions and no answers. Right. Well, so, you know, this is this could be a tough conversation because I think one of the biggest areas that people feel like this about is the comic book movie field Mm -hmm. that, you know, that's that's a conflict of interest. Right. Because it's like it's my it's one of my favorite things in the world. And yet, like when people point out refurbished content, yeah, they often point to like the marvel universe now obviously we know it's deeper um but it's like it is hard to like 
to disagree sometimes and be like, no, like I get it. Yeah. You know, it, it, it is very similar. You are going to get your CGI boss battle at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, you are going to get your quip, quip, quippy joke. Yeah. After I wish you saw Dr. Strange. We'll talk about it soon. <laughs> yes. Soon we'll talk that, about that episode soon. comes. I don't want to sway you in any which way. Yeah. But when people have this conversation about comic book movies being a little refurbished, this was one of the first times I was kind of like, ooh, I kind of feel it almost. But yeah. anyways, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> but let's just say um, I, I I like to take this conversation to a place where we look at like what, how it's changed, first mm-hmm. of all, like entertainment in general. So. And you were talking about the radio and the radio always has been the place for the the refurbished fucking thing. God damn. It's a big. Oh, trash day. It's trash. It's I thought Wednesdays were trash day, but that's fine. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So and the radio has. Right. It's always been that place. And but it's funny. It's like for a long time, all we had was the radio. Mm -hmm. And when you got a CD. You got a CD for the radio hit. Yep. The two or three singles f- that w- you heard from the radio or a music video on MTV. And then every other song on there seemed to be like a filler song. Yeah. Right. So that's interesting. Um, and then television was very minimal, too. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> so it's weird that like now we have so many avenues for original things but it's like do we have too many options Mm -hmm. is there too much of a quota to me yeah where they people have nothing else to do but refurbish old ideas it's like they're they're, like even on paramount plus like star trek's becoming a real comeback type of thing again yeah where they have like a a cartoon star trek they have like a Star Trek live action show again. Like, you know, we already did three new Star Trek movies. Yeah. Like JJ Abrams. Like it's it's not just Marvel. It's not just Star Wars. No. Like it's 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 everywhere. It is. And I think right now Disney is the number one culprit. Right. Because what is Disney doing right now? Everything is a live action remake of again movies that are not even that old. Right. Mulan, Lion right. King. Aladdin. Yes. Like, we're just like, why are you really that dry? Are you really that out of ideas and original content? And I don't think that's the case. Right. I don't think there's a lack of original new ideas. I think it's a studio head thing. I think they don't want that. They don't want to really break out of their shell. They want what's going to make them the most money, which is a big spectacle remake of something that already made them a ton of money. And so they say no and reject new original content because it's too risky. Yes. If we put out a movie that is original and it flops, well, now we just lost a lot of money. So it's it sucks because new original ideas are getting smothered out. Right. And the same stuff like we're, now we're even talking about redoing Shrek. What? Fucking Shrek just happened. No. No, 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 no. They were going to reboot Shrek. They did not. They are not. Yeah. And why? It's not like the the animation is outdated. Like it's Shrek still functions fine story wise and animation wise. Why are we rebooting it right now? I can't. I mean, everything is just a reboot or a live action. Right now they're shooting here. They're shooting a Looney Tunes. What? Yeah. Live action Looney Tunes. I saw them here in Albuquerque. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. I mean, but that sucks because it's live action Looney Tunes. Right. Can like has no one else come up with a a, a monumental cartoon, a new cartoon character that's like that can stand up to a Looney Tune or a yeah. or a di- or a Mickey Mouse? Like when's the next one? Like we need to make room for the next ones. Like yeah. not just, you know, goddamn, man, since the 19 like 30s, mm-hmm. Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse. Yeah. I don't They've run the game. Yeah. So, um, first of all, fuck them for trying to remake Shrek. Yeah. I don't know. Like, why are we doing that? I'm only going to be 27, dude. Yeah. I watched Shrek like when I was a kid. Yeah. 
we're not that old. No, Fuck. the movies themselves are not that old no. at all. Like, that's I what wanna, I don't understand. I don't, they should not be remaking Shrek in our lifetime. No. Well, and that's also to say that a movie doesn't have to be old to remake it. Right. Like, it was, it's perfect. It's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it ain't. What are we rebooting it for? Like, what are they, what's the goal? What's the goal? Well, you know? and this is what makes it bad, is the goal is to modernize it. So they're going to do like Shrek, but there's going to be like iPads. Yeah. And like, yeah. You know, there's going to be like Shrek with iPads and critical race theory, mm-hmm. like sp- <laughs> sprinkled <laughs> throughout. Although Shrek already had like race content that was like you know interesting like the the discrimination against the fairy tale characters yeah but like they're gonna make it like a twitter thread yeah you know exactly. and that's when it's gonna suck uh we'll see and it's like they already had interesting thing like donkey fucked a dragon yeah um like come on if that's not diversity yeah. <laughs> and they had little like dragon donkey babies yeah like come on and, and like you know Whatever you want to do those ideas, just do it in a different platform. Don't reboot an animated series to push that. Right. If that's what they're doing. Right. Of course, we're just assuming, but like, you know, everything's just so recycled. We're just seeing the same stuff. Like you said, there's so everything now, of course, is going to streaming. Yeah. And everything's becoming TV shows. So like, we're going to have not only the plethora of Marvel movies that we have, but then they'll sprout off into little Marvel shows same with Star Wars, a little Star Wars shows. We're already right. having our third one coming out at the end of this month, which yes. is Obi-Wan. We have two. We have Mandalorian. We have Book of Boba Fett. And now we have right. Obi-Wan. And it's like, those are just going to keep sprouting, I feel like. Yeah. And They're going to be. And it's interesting. Yeah. Because it wasn't even like we have watched the evolution in, in front of our eyes, especially with like Marvel, where it's like, this is not how it started. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it started with the movies. Um, and then like agents of shield, but they started to see like, Oh, this could, you know, this could work. And then we got like these R rated Marvel shows and Mm -hmm. yada, yada. Um, but you know, it's what I'm interested in is like, is this our fault? Like, is it because we're, we're eating these things up? And here's another thing that's interesting with like the Shrek, the thing that, that makes me think about them wanting to remake Shrek is because Shrek is very much like a meme right now. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it's really funny to like reference Shrek. They have like the Shrek filter on TikTok of like Shrek. I don't know. You'll see like women like posting this funny filter where it's like Shrek is like their boyfriend and they're like, leave me alone. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so Shrek is like a fucking meme. Um, and then you you mentioned a song. What was the name of that one song? Big Dick Energy, except or it wasn't big, called Big Big Energy. It was yeah. It's like is the song like does she say Big Dick Energy in the song? Or? No, I think she just says Big Big Energy. Right. Unless the maybe the explicit version she does. But. Maybe she does. And it's like, but the thing about that is like you things become like a meme or a catchphrase mm-hmm. online, and then they come out with a song that is that catchphrase. Yeah. I remember when I started to realize that I was like, what came first? Like, did, did the catchphrase create the song or did the song create the catchphrase online? Like Like, YOLO, like YOLO. That's a great first example. Now that that's like, yeah, song first, I think. And then, or was it, I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know. Now I'm rethinking everything I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they want, right? They want the line to be blurred. Yeah. But blurred lines. Blurred lines. Thick. There you go. You know. Also sampled. Pretty sure. Very I don't know sampled. what they sampled, but they sampled something in that it's song. It's something. Yeah. You know it is. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Anyways. And that's where, <laughs> you know what? But that song, it's funny. Like. I just said that because blurred lines and and you said the lines are blurred. But like if there's any example of a song that's kind of like the turn of like, what the fuck is this generic shit? Yeah, that's like one of them for sure. Where you're like, 
what? Like, who listens to this? <laughs> yeah. Who lists? Like, who? And that's where you get into the NPC conversation. <laughs> mm, right. <laughs> <laughs> where you're like, are some people just not real? Yeah. And is this song who it's for? Yeah, like the <laughs> the character that's walking on the street with the headphones on yeah. in a video game. That's what they're listening to. And it's like, what is he like? I can't prove that that person doesn't just go into that building and sit there for six hours in that one spot until they respawn <laughs> out onto the road. Like, yeah, I don't know. You know, the, and this has got to be the the biggest one for me in the next few years we're gonna have i think two or three different pinocchio movies coming out yeah what the fuck we've done pinocchio we've done we've beaten pinocchio to death come on and here we are within a span of one or two years we're gonna have like two to three more there's gonna be a fully animated one by guillermo del toro it's supposed to be a darker right edgier pinocchio and then there's gonna be i think a live action one with tom hanks as geppetto And I'm just like, man, Disney. And it's going to be called Geppetto. It's like the Pinocchio cinematic universe. Yeah. Fucking Geppetto, the movie. Like, what? (laughs) (laughs) The fuck is this? We didn't need a Geppetto movie. No. Same with, like, Craven the Hunter. Sorry, but anyways. (laughs) That's fine, but fuck. I'm just saying, like, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, everything's just so recycled. There's an interesting phenomenon that I I remember when I started to notice that, which is like that two studios will put out the exact same movie within the span of a month. And that happens. Right. So, yeah. What is the there was like Olympus has fallen and then there was like another one and Hmm. they were both about the same thing. They were both about like a terrorist attack on the White House. Yeah. Right. White House down. Yeah, like White House Down and Olympus Has Fallen. Yeah. Came out in like the span of two months of each other back in high school. Oh, wow. And it was like this weird phenomenon I started to notice. And I don't have a lot more examples, but I know it continues to happen and it has happened since then. But like where you're just like, so these are two movies with pretty much the exact same plot line Mm -hmm. coming out two different studios. And so it's. What is that? <laughs> well, Bugs Life and Ants. Right. That's the beginning. That's yeah. where it all started. Yeah. <laughs> That's where it all started. <laughs> it started with Bugs Life and Ants. Yeah. Because I do remember being a kid and being like, this is kind of weird. Like, this is the same thing, right? Right. So is that... Well, so, I mean, but you talk about, like the money and it's like that's true so like the original idea doesn't get doesn't get this the the play because the safe play is to remake the jungle book yeah with john favreau directing and then remake the lion king with john favreau directing yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then do the the mandalorian with john favreau directing what I, what I, yeah, what I don't, you know, because like there's a couple of things that come to mind where I'm like, this, they should remake this in an artistic original way. I'm like, I think about like a Snow White. Mm-hmm. They could do that really fucking cool. Yeah. Um, they can make it dark and gritty and scary almost. Um, but then the, like a Lion King where you're just like, this is a cartoon that came out in 95, like, and it's very good on its own legs. Yep. And then you get the, the computer generated version and you can't, you want to make the animals look as real as possible, but you can't give them the expressions that you can give them if you draw them. Yeah. And that's weird. And then, and then what they do to us is they, they get in our dopamine receptors and they show us this cast list mm-hmm. that has fucking Beyonce and Donald Glover and Seth Rogen yeah. and fucking John Oliver. And they're like, Billy look at I- all these people we got. And you're yeah. like, oh, that's so great. <laughs> and it's like goes viral. And then and then you watch it. And you, but then you just you're just like, I've been duped again. Well, how different is it really? Right. It's this exact same story. A right. lot of the shots are the exact same shots as the original. And at the end of the day, it's still a fully animated movie. 
Yeah. Right? Like it's, it's just, I think they went and shot on location, some live backdrops. Right. But it's still a fully animated movie, just like the original one was. And then it's like, what are we doing? And then you get into, well, Lion King is just a rehash of Hamlet. It is. So then- <laughs> it's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is that? And what you said earlier about Jungle Book. I think we've had two or three. There was again. like two or three. There was the Disney one. And then there was one that was just called Mowgli. <laughs> the Mowgli cinematic universe. The Mo- yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, man, man, man. Why? And I haven't seen. I haven't seen him. Well, Either that's the, and then, yeah, because then, you know, let's just, I mean, you gotta, there's no reason there should be a Morbius movie. <laughs> Have you seen it yet? No, I'm just, would, uh, <laughs> Morbius, <laughs> nobody knows who that is unless you watch the 90s Spider-Man cartoon yeah. and you saw the like three Morbius episodes and then Blade <laughs> is in it and that's fucking dope, but it's yeah. like. Uh, Morbius? Yeah. For who? And then we got Craven the Hunter? For who? And isn't it the guy who was in Age of Ultron as Quicksilver and yeah. his character died? Yep. And so the same actor is coming back to play this villain in the same universe? So now not only are we recycling ideas, we're recycling actors. We are. And we're. How does that work? How does it work? How do you explain that an actor an actor's character dies. Yeah. And the same actor comes back to play a character in the same universe. Yeah. It'd be like if they got Tom Hardy to come play like Galactus now, like fantastic four. Yeah. Or the thing. And you're just like, (laughs) like, okay, they did it with Chris Evans. Right. Right. He was the human torch in fantastic four that flopped. He came back triumphant is captain America. Yes. You got Ben Affleck who flopped as daredevil (laughs) (laughs) came back as Batman. Right. And I think there's a few more. Oh, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. He was Deadpool originally. Right. That nobody liked that version of Deadpool. No. So he came back as green lantern in DC that flopped. Didn't do great. Came back triumphant again with Marvel as Deadpool the way it was meant to be. Right. So, wow. I mean, there's just so much more recycling than I originally thought. Yeah. The more we talk about it, the more it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. I think it, it begs the question, were things better when we had less options? No. Well, it's a catch 22. Yeah. Is that the right use of? I like a good catch 22. That phrase. Because, when we had less, all we wanted was more. Ooh. And now that we have more, we're like, well, but I think it's that we're getting just more of the same. We're not getting more new. Right. We're getting more of the same. And you're right. There's too many options. There's too many platforms. So all these networks are starving for content. And so they're just like making shit yeah. just to fill up their con their, their platforms. And also the the binge culture. Yeah. Right? Where it's so easy to sit down and binge an entire season and then those fans are like, "Okay, now what? We need something else because we, we just binge else. this in one night." Yep. And so studios will see that and be like, "Shit, yeah, we need to like flood them with stuff even if it's not good." Right. And I think we mentioned this before actually on the Star Wars episode where we were like, "The first installment of a movie is often the best and the second tends to not be the greatest because the timeline between the first and the second is much shorter than it was between making the first one. Right. So there was a lot of time to really develop it versus the second one was kind of, Hey, we need to get this out. Yeah. And I think we're seeing that even more. So I wish I would love to talk to someone in the industry as a writer who could like back that up potentially and say like, yeah, it's hard because we're having to churn out way more content in a shorter period of time and we don't get to develop things as much. I would love to talk to someone like that too and and ask like what are they like metaphorically putting a gun to their head and telling them like you need to do this like yeah. we need a shrek. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if you have a passion project that's mm-hmm. really really fucking good. 
you know, like an original, like everything everywhere all at once. I don't care. Yeah. You need to write this fucking Shrek and shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, Shrek. and you have three months to do it. You know what's funny about the Shrek thing? The last Shrek movie came out when we were in high school, didn't it? Did it? I think so. Huh. The last one? Yeah. So that's it probably fucking, did. So, and that's, you know, and I was talking to my mom and she, uh, she was talking about the, you know, listening to a little bit of the star Wars episode. And, you know, one thing she said that, and I think this is the, the justification behind why they might do this is like, it, it it's cool that there, they, there's a star Wars for my generation. This is my mom speak. There's yeah. a star Wars for my generation. There's a star Wars for your generation. And there's a star Wars for your brother's generation. Which I, you know, I understand that rationale. Definitely. Yeah, there's a generation, you know, that for every generation, there's a new story to tell for that generation. But like, like you said, the gap is getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. It's going to be like halfway through Gen Z, you're getting another Shrek. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, you know, that I'm blown away by that. That's why I keep referencing it. It's like, and it's, there's other, th- you know, they just came out with an, and I'm thinking like horror now. Mm-hmm. They just came out with another Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Ugh. How many since I've so there's the one from like the 80s or the 70s. Yeah. There's been two more since we've been out. Well, now three. But I'm just saying like when we were young, there was another one. Mm-hmm. Then there was another one. I thought that they tried to make like when we were like in high school. Now there's a third one that they've tried to make another yeah. reboot. Yeah. Yeah. Reboot. I mean, I think horror movies are for sure the leader the leading genre in yeah. recyclement i mean how many halloweens do we have and then how many and so then there's the yeah and then you get the original halloween they made like a thousand of those yeah and then you get yeah that's true because even the original halloween is not the the ones all the ones they made after that aren't continuations exactly they like were like some of them are like the most recent one is now it like is and and even that didn't end the series it's still going there's and gonna be then, another made, one like, a rob zombie one yeah like when we were in high school and then like friday the 13th saw well which when we're recording this it is friday the 13th oh shit damn we better watch our asses for real there. <laughs> well that's it for today. yeah that'll do it uh before this microphone malfunctions right and electrocutes me um so and yeah so and then they've tried to remake a freddy krueger um and there's chucky kind of, yeah chucky they just came up with a new chucky where they modernized him they and he did. was like controlled by an app or something was- like god <laughs> And I kind of hate, like, you know what, you know what my least favorite thing to see in a movie is? And there's no way around it. I've had to do a lot of acceptance about this. Mm -hmm. Like, I hate in a movie where there's, like, FaceTime. Yeah. I hate that. Oh, this is good to know. Yeah. Tell me. A chat, I want, I just wish a movie wouldn't reference cell phones. Yeah. Can we get a movie that doesn't reference cell phones? That would be good. Like, I understand you got to be, you know, I, I'm not saying don't have a character get a phone call from, you know, the. it's just like, imagine if they made the ring, the, if they remade the ring. And it's through a ring doorbell. That would be great. <laughs> I would love that. Yeah. That's even funnier than what I was going to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, that's funnier. This <laughs> is a ring doorbell. That would be better. But like, you know, in the ring, it's like you get the scary phone call from the creepy little girl and it's like seven days you're going to die. Yeah. And it's like that's so much more impactful on a landline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Like, Like I would hate to to see the remake of the ring. And it's like the iPhone ringtone. <laughs> You're going to die. Unknown. Yeah. Like there's nothing scary about that. Or a text bubble. Yeah. Text bubble. You're yeah. going to die. It's like a, yeah. It's like a WhatsApp. Yeah. She yeah. like sends you through <laughs> WhatsApp. She's. <laughs> oh, that's great. And speaking of getting those phone calls, another remake scream. Right. Uh, but I do want to go back to this ring idea because that's kind of no, interesting. No, that's fun. Like, let's, let's hash that one out. Let's hash that out live for the people. Imagine yeah. it's the ring and, you know, everyone has their Amazon 
like what are they called echoes the, yeah like an echo. echo show yeah and like i don't know how this is just off the top of my head it could know, be awful yes but like you get the little notification yeah. someone's at your front door and you go and you look at it and nobody's there right but the, but it went off right and then maybe there's like a little like sign and it's really far away and you can't really read it yeah and you're like what and you go outside and you check and nothing's there and you go back to the screen and it's a little bit closer <gasps> And then you, you're like, what is that? And then, you know, it's the countdown. It's the days. Ah. And then on the day that it's supposed to happen, I've never seen the the ring, actually. Yeah. Never seen the original, I'll be honest. But yeah, right. then you answer it that one day, and it's the scary little girl with the hair in front of her face. Right. And then she starts crawling through the Echo show through screen. The, through the Echo. F- through your ring, and you can still call it the ring. Right. And that's because, like, instead of, like, getting thrown into a well... And having a rock put on top of it, um, I would say that she was maybe she was she was thrown into like an Amazon warehouse, <laughs> yeah, and like you know, and like and like ring doorbell camera, and like she was like she was like suffocating under a pile of ring doorbell cameras. Oh right? yeah. <laughs> and so, and like she worked at Amazon, maybe she went to use the restroom and Jeff Bezos didn't like that. Mm-mm. So he trapped her under all those ring doorbells, like yeah. you said. And also, and also she's a communist. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> she's got, a Marxist. Got throw something and like so that. she's like for capitalism, she's <laughs> like Amazon is capitalism. And so that, and all these like middle-class Americans with ring doorbells, like I am going to punish them for feeding into capitalism yeah that would be the modern day ring that's it that's the remake you guys can have that for free i'm excited to see it when it comes out (laughs) (laughs) like go ahead and yeah we're gonna give that one yeah we need to send that to hollywood yeah stat but right there that just goes to show you how easy it is to just recycle an idea and it doesn't even have to be good and they'll make it they'll make it and that's not as scary as a little girl crawling out of a 32 inch box of yeah. a television with something behind with the back, mm-hmm. you know, like not like a flat screen. I'm talking yeah. like, you know, that there's and, and with and with static TVs don't even have static anymore. They just have those like little floating, like no input thing yeah. where they just go straight to black. I need like, you know how you can like pull up like a a makeshift fireplace on your, I need like a static or maybe like the color bars. Yeah. I want that back. Oh, the color bars are great. I want to fall asleep to that. (laughs) The snow, (laughs) the snowy screen. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's really, and I don't, and I'm not a big fan of that. Like Chucky being controlled by an app. Like I just... It's it's kind of ruining our content. I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna hot take that. Are we really out of monster ideas? Thank villain you. Villain ideas? No, uh, there has to be. You know, I think. Well, that's the thing. So then we can shout out the people who are mm-hmm. doing good original work. Um, because you think about I don't know why Jordan Peele comes to mind. Yeah, but it's like okay, like good original work. I'm not seeing, you know, there's no FaceTimes in those movies. Um, There's a lot, you know, there's a couple of people trying, but yeah, we need new monsters. And then even then it's like hard to, because it's like, he doesn't necessarily have like a monster, but I remember him posting like from the movie us Mm -hmm. and like his scary lady from that. And got her on the cover of like Monster Magazine. And he was like, I've always wanted to have something on, on Monster Magazine. Yeah. But we need new. I need a new Freddy Krueger. Yeah. But not him. And they're out there. They're out there. But no, but they're not being accepted. I think this is the time for independent studios to really rise and shine. Because I think we might be coming to a head here where people are tired. Right. Of the recycled generic bullshit and they're going to start to turn towards these people who are putting out really compelling awesome new takes on stories Mm -hmm. because we'll be honest everything has been done to an extent but it's like how can you do it differently 
I think that's potentially where we're headed. If you're an independent filmmaker, if you're an independent studio, your your time is coming up right now to to break out. Well, and that's the thing, and that's that's why you got to go see everything everywhere all at once. And I almost might say maybe don't watch that before Doctor Strange because it might fuck up Doctor Strange for you Ah. because it kind of did for me where I'm like, how does everything everywhere all at once make a movie about the multiverse Mm -hmm. on millions less with millions less money? Yeah. And completely original, completely original. Everything about It's conception of the multiverse, how it works, how you tap into it, how you incite the multiverse, how you go within it without it. Completely original. Yeah. And then and then you go watch Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and it's not bad, but you're like that other thing was better. It's so unique and original. Yeah. Because you're like because it's it's. I don't know, man. It's crazy, bro. <laughs> they just need to, yeah, they need to prop those things up. We need to listen to that. Yeah. We need to we need to let those people shine. They're out there. Mm-hmm. They're out there. I think you and us, as much as we'd love to be like the Russo brothers and make Infinity War, I think yeah. we'd much rather take one of our original ideas and make it from scratch. And I think we have them. We have them, dude. It's just like, will it, does anyone want to listen? No. Who wants Not to listen? Not yet. Not quite. Yeah. We need to, we need, yeah, we need to really make sure. And it's, I mean, A24 is the only, but we need more A24s. Yeah. There can't just be A24. We need more A24s out there doing that. Yeah. But is there room for that? I don't know. There's room. There is room. Will they, will they, Make the room. Will they make it? It's there. Will they take the time to make it? Right. I don't know. That's the question. Yeah. That's the question. That's my thing. Yeah. I mean, go see everything because God damn, man. Yeah. It has original plot line, original lore. It has action. It's like you're watching. You know what? what, Here's one thing that I've been learning lately about where I've always been really locked into and, and some other things very original. It's like when I growing up with comic books themselves, it Mm -hmm. was always Marvel. It was always DC. And the older I'm getting, the more I'm realizing how many other comic books came out uh, with other complete original ideas that had nothing to do with Marvel and DC that are so fucking good. And that's kind of what everything everywhere all at once felt like. It felt like a graphic novel that you stumble upon under a pile of Marvel and DC comics. Yeah. And you go, what is this? I'm going to, all right, I'll check it out. And you, and it, and you're fucking like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know, (laughs) I mean, I think it often feels like there's only room in the world for two entities, right? Marvel or DC PC or Mac, right? PlayStation or Xbox. Hmm. There could be a lot of other contenders in these categories, but they might be snuffed out. They never get the chance to grow. They never get a chance to thrive. They potentially get sabotaged. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could be, you know, you never know. Yeah. Like they don't get a chance to be to be seen, to be shown. And it's it is a little discouraging. It is. I mean, I hate to I made the joke about the communist fucking the ring Mm -hmm. but like (laughs) you know not to but it's kind of true it's like the monopoly it's like this is where like this is where america is yeah capitalism kind of fucks everything up it kind of creates the the cycle of of desire for profit which turns into playing it safe, mm-hmm. which turns into not taking any risks, which means we're going to get the same type of shit over and over again because it's what we're going to spend money for. And it's what the people who have the people who who cannot decide for themselves what they like, what they're into and why they're into it. They're going to keep paying money for that when yeah. because they they need society to tell them what they're what they like. Mm-hmm. 
And the, and they're like, easy. We'll tell you exactly what to like, what to wear, what to think, what to dress, what to watch, what to listen to. Yeah. Not a problem. We got you. And it's like, that's very sad. Mm-hmm. That's very sad. It's doling. It's dull. Yeah. Fuck. I think Disney too is like pretty much self-sustaining at this point. Oh God. Because not only are they remaking their own shit, but then they're making movies about their own rides. Like obviously Pirates was great. Right. Pirates of the Caribbean. But you got Jungle Cruise. I mean, what are we going to get next? Like Disney, the safari movie? (laughs) You know, like. (laughs) What are we going to get? It's a small world after all. Yeah. The movie. God. The Matterhorn. (laughs) Space Mountain movie. The Matterhorn cinematic universe. (laughs) Fuck. Disney's Churro, the movie. Yeah. (laughs) Disneyland Churro, the movie. (laughs) It's like about, yeah, it's about a little churro. He's like, it's about that he's, he's an undocumented, uh, immigrant from Mexico and he's like, he got a job at Disney selling his, his body. (laughs) (laughs) And It's about like learning how to be like, how to navigate a new world. And it's going to be about like how America's racist. Yeah. There you go. Disney. (laughs) We just wrote a churro movie there for you, you free of we'll charge. You. Take it. Now, is the it. Disney churro, is it amazing? What is this? I've I haven't had this. one in a very long time, yeah. but that's kind of, you know, uh, churros at any Disney park are typically pretty good. They're fucking fire. That's what people, they? yeah, talk about. But they're commercialized. Because yeah. there will never beat a, a strawberry churro from Federico's. Oh, or like Filiberto's. And you got to get it in the war zone. Yeah. God damn. Out of the back of someone's truck. A couple of rolled tacos and a <laughs> strawberry churro. Yeah. You know, with gunshots playing out around you. In the background, it's about, we talked about this, immersion. Immersion. Yeah. <laughs> immersion. <laughs> it's, it is going to go there. I think, yeah, I, it's true though. So the problem, it's like, that's the problem, right? So there's. It's fine that there's no more, like, there's not a lot of original ideas. Yeah. You know, anything you you do, you'll be able to probably trace back to something. But the problem is rehashing it the right way. And that goes back to the music, like the sampling. It's like you can sample things Mm -hmm. good and interesting. And then, or you can just do the DJ Khaled cinematic universe. (laughs) And that's just sad. It makes me feel sad. The DJ Khaled symphonic universe. Yes. (laughs) I just want to see him like sample Beethoven. Oh, and throw like, who would he have? He would have like Drake, Drake, Travis Scott and Rihanna. Maybe know. Lil Rihanna. He's done some Rihanna before. He has. It's a sad, sad entertainment industry that we're in right now. As independent creators, this is our time to shine. Yeah. There needs to be, I think we need to rise up. Yeah. And stand up to this a little bit. This is your motivational call to action. Write that thing you want to write, whether yeah. it's a song a movie, a TV show, a storybook, a graphic novel. Right. Whatever it is, write that thing, paint that picture. Do hit, it. Hit record on your camera and just go because just do it. Because the the recycled stuff is it's getting it's getting too too much. So what do I want to know like what I want to look at? I'm just going to pull up IMDb and pull up coming soon. Yeah. It's hard because, so we got this new avatar. That's one. That's the first thing that fucking comes up. Talk about 12 years in the making, man. How do they have a movie that's like, it already feels like they might as well have rebooted it, honestly. They might as well have rebooted it. Yeah. IMDB used to be a lot more, uh, a lot more accessible. I'm confused. Uh, coming soon to theaters. That's what I'm looking at. So downtown Abbey. <laughs> no, oh, da- <laughs> downtown Abbey. <laughs> no, there's actually okay. So the Top Gun, right? Maverick. Top Gun, of course. How could we forget? 
Right. So that's, I mean, and it might be, actually it has really good ratings so far. Really? But could they not have made an original movie about fighter pilots? Uh, Sure they could have. Right? Uh, We did the same thing with Independence Day. Right. Rebooted that thing, kind of. It was like a sequential movie, but. Jurassic World. Jurassic World, here we go. We're excited. That is one where I'm willing to make an exception. You give it a pass. Because I don't get tired of seeing people running from dinosaurs. And once again, Spielberg has the market on dinosaurs. No one else is making dinosaur shit or else Spielberg's coming in. Yeah. And he's going to look you in the eye. He's going to pull out his fucking Spielberg dick and Mm -hmm. smack it on the table and say, I dare you. Yeah. I dare you to make a dinosaur movie. And you're not going to you're not going to do that. No, you don't do that. So, Lightyear. yeah, I, I do become part of the problem in that way. That's <laughs> okay. I'm like, you know, like, give well, me more we Jurassic. we all are. Yeah. And that's the point. Like, we all are. Yeah. You know, I saw the Halloween reboot. Yeah, I did too. You know, I I am at every Marvel movie. Yep. I'm at except, every Marvel movie. Except Morbius. Yeah, except fucking. Ugh. <laughs> God damn it. What else? Make me mad. Lightyear. <laughs> oh, Buzz right. Lightyear movie. <laughs> right. The, the Buzz Lightyear cinematic universe. Yeah. Like, are we eventually going to get a Woody movie now where it's about a, a real cowboy who existed back in the day? There's another Minions movie coming out. Stop. Minions, the rise of Gru. What do you mean the rise of Gru? <laughs> It's going to be Gru's origin story. Well, okay. And it's there, the there's, prequel. There's another thing that we keep doing, right? <laughs> we keep making prequels and origin stories. <laughs> Some of them are interesting to see and we care about. Others, Better call Saul. Yeah. Others who cares? Why? 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 For Gru? Yeah. From Despicable Me? I mean, it's just... It's hilarious. Pause of Fury. Pause of Fury. What is that about? I think it's a Paw Patrol. No. Like Maybe I got this wrong. Maybe I got that wrong. DC League of Super Pets. That's a stretch. That's I think, a stretch. I think I did see a trailer for that where it's like pets and they're all like they, they're the pets of superheroes. Right. Now, the problem is you start seeing some of these original movies that aren't a part of these things and you're going, um, but that doesn't look good either. So, (laughs) So that's the problem. So I think Dwayne Johnson voices one of the pets. Yeah. In that movie. Yeah. And he's also the Shazam Black Adam villain, which is coming out as well. So. I mean, which is it? What, is he a DC super pet or is he this guy? You like, you also got Kevin Hart. How many times is Kevin Hart going to voice a little animated animal till he is in the grave? And then you put you now everyone just, everything is about putting the rock and Kevin Hart and everything. Which right. I kind of like it works well in Jumanji. And then it, it was all right in central intelligence. Sure. Were they in that together? They were. Yeah, they were. It works. But again, we're just recycling it. We just keep doing it over right. and over. We're like, oh, let's do it animated now. Now, here's a revelation. They've got themselves a Puss in Boots movie coming out. So they're still making movies in the Shrek cinematic universe. So we've had a Puss in Boots movie so before. This is the second so this is one? the second Puss in Boots movie. So we are still scraping the Shrek cinematic universe. Yeah. While talking about rebooting Shrek. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. That is. That's a problem. But uh, so what are we going to do with these old ones now? Right. What are we going to? What? Yeah. Is it? Is it? Is that? You know what? I would actually love to reboot Shrek in the new Puss in Boots movie. In the original Shrek cinematic universe, I would love if, like, Puss, <laughs> if Puss goes into a magical fairy tale land and finds a wormhole 
<laughs> and then it's Shrek and the Multiverse of Madness. Boom. Right? The Shrek Multiverse. The Shrek Multiverse. I need it. I need it. And it's probably coming. Let's be honest. Now, there's a movie called Cocaine Bear coming out, and that's just fun. I've heard of this. Yeah. It's, uh, who's doing it? Kristen. Let's have a look. Bell? Olivia Wilde? Now, I see, all I see is Elizabeth Carrie Banks. Russell and Ray Liotta right now. I think Liz- Elizabeth Banks is Elizabeth like directing Banks it or something. Elizabeth Banks is directing it. Yeah, yes. there we go. Now, we've got a new Haunted Mansion movie coming out. Right. Talk about Disney rides. Just rode the ride. I've seen the Eddie Murphy movie. Fun. Why do we need to do it again? We don't need a new Haunted Mansion movie, but here's the problem. Rosario Dawson, Owen Wilson. That's not the problem. Um, Danny DeVito, Tiffany Haddish, Lakeith Steinfeld. I really like this. Now, this picture here that they're using actually might not be for the movie so never mind oh if they make it this vibe though if they make it like this Hmm. the listeners can't see but it has like a very like 80s goosebumps yeah type of vibe exactly i could fuck with that i could fuck with that but be cool yet john wick four scream six scream six (laughs) let's stop screaming We're done with the screaming. I've never seen a single scream movie and I'm done with the screams. <laughs> scream six. Man, but, it's like in, in Back to the Future when he's he's in the future and he's looking around. I think it's Back to the Future too. Yeah. And he's looking around and, you know, they got hoverboards and all that good stuff. And he turns and he looks and there's a holographic 3D Jaws poster for Jaws mm, 23. Right. And I got to say that is not far fetched from where we're living right now. They got that right. They nailed that. Not necessarily Jaws, but bless, man. How many? uh, What's the most renditions of a movie that have ever been made? I'm curious. Probably Halloween. Let's see. Let's 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 look that up. I actually want to know that exact answer. So there's eight Planet of the Apes films. Jeez. Eight Batman films. (sighs) Eight Harry Potters. Nine Star Wars. Nine Nightmare on Elm Streets. Really? Nine? There's nine Nightmare on Elm Streets. <sighs> There's ten Halloweens. Okay. There's eleven Pink Panthers. Really? That's one from hmm. 1963 to 2009. I gotta say, the Steve Martin ones are my favorite. Right. I didn't know there was others. Yeah. You know how disappointing it is when you're a kid... And you see a movie called The Pink Panther, Mm -hmm. and you're used to that Pink Panther character from Boomerang, and then you go to the Pink Panther movie that's playing on TV, and it's like some weird ass like old movie with actual humans. Yeah. That happened to me so many times growing up. I just (laughs) had to throw that out there. There's 11 Marvels, which I don't... I think there's more. There's way more. 12 Friday the 13th. This article might have been from another time. 12 Star Treks. 23 James Bonds. Wow. And now we're, again, we're already talking about who's next. How about this one? 30 Godzillas. Stop. So this might be number one. That has to be. Carry on. 30 Godzillas. There's a, there's a film series called Carry On that actually has 31 films. Wow. It's got to be foreign. It is. It's British, I guess. Hmm. It says, who would have thought that a series of low-budget, raunchy British comedy films, all produced and directed by the same two men, with a revolving cast of top-notch comedians, would run for 34 years and encompass 31 movies? Wow. Huh. So I guess the answer is carry on. Interesting. British film, but not too far behind it, Godzilla. Godzilla. Now that's an interesting, and we're still... Godzilla vs. King Kong. Yep. Saw it. Saw it too. <laughs> Don't know if I liked it that much. Yeah, I mean. It was like, okay. Yeah. I had strep throat when I watched that. No, oh, maybe that influenced it. It didn't help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I don't know where we go from here. But I don't know. I think we need to do some self care. Yeah. Cause I'm so. feeling all sorts of out of whack. Now. Depression. I don't feel good now. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully you at home don't feel good about it either. Cause this kind of sucks. Right. Right. But what do we do? Right. We did, we buy another ticket. We keep going to the movies and we support the good ones. So, you know, we so we go see our everything everywhere is all at once is. Yes. There's one coming out this weekend called Men, a 24 horror film. Mm. Looks really good. Um, we see that. I'm excited to go see Jordan Peele's Nope. We see Nope. See what that's all, all about. Us. Yeah. The ones like Nope are good because those are studio. Those yeah. are like mainstream studio films that are allowing we got to we got to reward them mm-hmm. for allowing an artist to do his art. Yeah. Instead of rehashing some bullshit. Exactly. We must thank must. Them. So that's what we got to do. And then, you know, we see our Jurassic Parks. We see our Doctor Stranges. Mm-hmm. We're going to see them. And we hold our breath for the next announcement of who's going to be James Bond. And. It's fine. Like my brain is already wired in that way. Yeah. And that's the bigger conspiracy. It's like, this is neuroplasticity. They are (laughs) rewiring our brains. Yeah. And that's fine. I mean, it's whatever. What can we do? What can I do? Yeah. I'm not going to move to the mountains and meditate every day. No, I can't live in the mountains. I can go there and escape, but I will not. I can't live there. I'm not going to go to the monastery. Yeah. <laughs> not yet at least. So we'll, 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 you know, the, you know, make friends with your demons. Boom. Cause this is life. Yeah. This is where we are till then. Till then. Keep subscribing to your recycled bullshit. Yeah. Cause, uh, originality is hard to come by. It's out there, but, uh, we don't, we don't get to see it a whole lot. So nope. enjoy it when it comes. And uh, I guess go create your original thing. Do your thing. Do your thing. And we'll see you next time we do our thing. Yeah. (laughs) True. (laughs) Yeah.